January 31st Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Mark Chapter 3 of the New Testament Then Jesus entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they could accuse him. So he said to the man who had the withered hand, Stand up among all these people. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath, or evil, to save a life or destroy it? But they were silent. After looking around at them in anger, grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. So the Pharisees went out immediately and began plotting with the Herodians as to how they could assassinate him. Then Jesus went away with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan River, and around Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude came to him when they heard about the things he had done. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him, so the crowd would not press toward him. For he had healed many, so that all who were afflicted with diseases pressed toward him in order to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirit saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. Now Jesus went up the mountain and called for those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he named apostles, so that they would be with him, and he could send them to preach and to have authority to cast out demons. He appointed twelve. To Simon he gave the name Peter, to James and his brother John, the sons of Zebedee, he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Now Jesus went home, and a crowd gathered so that they were not able to eat. When his family heard this, they went out to restrain him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The experts in the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the ruler of demons he cast out demons. So he called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom will not be able to stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan rises against himself and is divided, he is not able to stand, and his end has come. But no one is able to enter a strong man's house and steal his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can thoroughly plunder his house. I tell you the truth, people will be forgiven for all sins, even all the blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin, because they said he has an unclean spirit. Then Jesus' mother and his brothers came. Standing outside, they sent word to him to summon him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside looking for you. He answered them and said, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who were sitting around him in a circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. God, today I come before you and, and offer up prayers for families. You know, in the story we hear about your son um, and his family trying to seize him and telling him he's lost his mind. His own family, Jesus' earthly family, was doing that for him. And I know that there's so many people listening who have whole families and family members and even close friends who they consider family who sometimes think that they're out of their mind for the path that we've chosen to be in relationship with you and to do the things that we do. 
our lives aren't meant to make sense to the world. And in fact, if they make sense, I've got a feeling we're doing something wrong. Um, we are called to not live of this world, which does make us different. And so I pray today for the people whose hearts are breaking because their family is agitated with them or frustrated with them or, or maybe they have a spouse that won't go to church with them or doesn't read the Bible and I just ask for endurance and strength especially in their prayer time that they just continue praying for these people you know I think of my wonderful younger sister who when I was in a time in my life a very long time in my life where I was doing everything but following you I was living for me she prayed for me all those years and I know I must have broken her heart a dozen times over some of the things I did or some of the things I said I remember even once calling her a Bible thumper <laughs> And she's not. She's just an amazing woman of God. God, I pray that the story of my sister and I would inspire others to not discount the chance for their family members and their loved ones and their friends to come into a relationship with your son. It took me a long time to find my way back to you, God. And now that I'm here, I just keep pursuing you, but... I just can't even imagine what I put my sister and her family through during that length of time that I was being a pain. <laughs> like Jesus' family and, and the people where the law was more important than a relationship with your son. God, I ask prayers for the people who are lost in those families. That they will see your love and your patience and your forgiveness and your mercy and your grace reflected in those family members you have placed in those families. That they will know that as they start to see only grace and only mercy and only forgiveness, that they will feel safe to start to open up as they start to walk towards a path of a relationship with your son. And I ask for those family members to be ready when that time comes. <laughs> it will be a time of great rejoicing, but also a time of a lot of questions and a lot of backtracking and a lot of learning and a lot of excitement and a lot of frustrations. Going into a new relationship is, is always exciting, but it's also a little bit unnerving because they're not quite sure what to expect. So as those family members come into a relationship with your son, God, I just ask for people to surround them. Surround them with support. Surround them with guidance. And disciple them in the way that you showed us how to disciple people. Which is not to do this drive-by story of the gospel and hope somebody gets the concept, but to really invest in these people's lives. To invest time and energy into these people's lives. To invest in that relationship. God, I know that this one's a hard one for a lot of people and, and sometimes people are just ready to throw in the towel and think that nothing can ever happen. But we do know that with you, all things, all, not a percentage, not part, but all things are possible with you. So I ask today that these people just never give up on their family members and their loved ones, their significant others and their friends. That if your son could deal with this type of situation with his earthly family, then we can also deal with it with our family and trust in you to do what needs to happen in those relationships. God, we just turn all these requests over to you. We lay them at your feet and ask that your will be done in your time. In your son's name we pray. Amen.